I'm Dr. Fred Fordad of the Texas Liver Institute in San Antonio, Texas, professor of medicine at the University of Texas, San Antonio. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm very happy to present this gastroenterology paper entitled Factors that Predict Response of Patients with Hepatitis C Virus Infection to Vesepravir. By way of background, there were two phase three trials published recently showing that Bisepravir PEG ribavirin therapy was significantly better in achieving SVR compared to PEG ribavirin controls. We also know that the IL-28B polymorphism is highly predictive of SVR and PEG ribavirin regimens, but its role in combination with other baseline predictors remains largely undefined in protease inhibitor-based therapy. The objectives of this study were to assess the relationship and utility of baseline factors and their association with SVR and early viral kinetics in both separavir-based regimens for genotype 1 hepatitis C patients, both treatment-naive and treatment-experienced. We also assessed the utility of a second IL-28B locus, the RS8099917, uh, in addition to the conventional one. We assessed the relationship between early viral kinetics and SVR and poorly interferon response of patients. This table shows the regression analysis for baseline predictors of SVR, and you can see here that uh, in terms of predicting SVR, IL-28B is in fact important in treatment-naive patients, along with other baseline variables such as low baseline viral load, the lack of cirrhosis, genotype 1B versus 1A, non-black race versus black race. In treatment experienced patients, however, only relapse was predictive of SVR. The IL-28B status is in fact important, and we know that it predicts interferon responsiveness, uh, but here you can see that both treatment naive and treatment experienced patients, the IL-28CC patients, do a little bit better than the non-CC patients. Compared to control, however, there was the largest incremental gain in SVR in the non-CC patients when Bisepravir was added. IL-28B status is useful in predicting interferon response as well as treatment week eight response. This is the critical time point for response-guided therapy with Bisepravir regimens. And roughly 90% of treatment-naive IL-28CC patients uh, become undetectable by treatment week eight, indicating that they would be uh, uh, able to have response-guided therapy. And 75% of uh, treatment experienced patients become undetectable week eight. Response-guided therapy can be used for relapsers but not for uh, null responders. This uh, table shows a regression analysis uh, for baseline predictors in predicting who's gonna have good interferon response. And IL-28B is predictive of this along with some other variables in both treatment experience and treatment naive patients. However, when treatment week four response is put into this, uh, IL-28B falls out and in fact the Week four treatment response of greater than or less than one log uh, decline becomes the only predictive uh, variable uh, of note. Uh, lack of cirrhosis remains important, as does low BMI and genotype 1B. All the separavir regimens have a four week lead in with PEG and ribavirin. And here you can see the patients that are poorly uh, interferon responsive, who we know have a 30 to 40 percent likelihood of SVR have another PCR time point at treatment week eight, which can really help the clinician. Patients who are poorly interferon responsive have less than a one log decline at week four, and ultimately have less than a three log decline from baseline at treatment week eight, achieve a 0% likelihood of SVR. So this is very predictive and tells us that we can discontinue these patients at treatment week eight if they don't have a three log decline. So in conclusion, in the SPRINT2 trial, which was a treatment-naive population, low viral load, IL-28CC, absence of cirrhosis, 1B subtype, non-black race were all predictive of SVR, but in treatment experienced patients, only relapse versus non-relapse was predictive. IL-28B can be used to predict which patients will qualify for shorter duration therapy, and in that sense is useful. However, in conjunction with the four-week lead-in, uh, becomes less uh, useful. The IL-28-917 locus did not add any more to our understanding of uh, the predictability compared to the locus that we normally measure. And the log decline in treatment week four is in fact the best predictor over IL-28. For poorly interferon responsive patients, those that have less than a one log decline, if they subsequently have less than a three log decline at treatment week eight, they should be discontinued. This is a very good uh, predictor of non-response. 
On behalf of all my co-authors, I'd like to thank you for your attention.